Hey everybody, Aaron Sansoni here. Welcome to another episode. It's time. It is time this month for another episode of Aaron Live. We're super excited to be hanging out with you again. If you've joined us for the, for, for the first time, you've already missed six massive episodes. So you've got to go back and watch them all. Seven. Um, seven. Oh, now we're up to our number eight now, right? Yeah, we're up to This is number eight now, right? So listen, this is going to be a big one. We're excited about this. This is a chance I get to hang out with you guys live right across social media and be able to hang out with you guys and share what's happening in the world of business, what's happening in the world of entrepreneurship, Entrepreneurship. And remember, everything we talk about is living by design and not living by default. So if you're ready, why don't we get into another episode of Aaron Life. Welcome back, here we are. Uh, just as my cameraman was about to walk in front of the camera, um, <laughs> he's gonna do it anyway. Uh, we're back for another episode of Aaron Live. Now listen, I get excited by this because I get to pause from my schedule of, uh, of running my venture capital firm, uh, going around the country and teaching people and also spending time with my charity when I'm hanging out with my family and my beautiful children. So this is cool, we get to hang out and talk to you guys. So if it's the first time you're joining us, I'm gonna be sharing with you as much as I can from business news to things that I like, to things that I don't like in the business world. Uh, and also I'm gonna be sharing with you what we call the Mentor Minute, where I'm gonna be giving you some advice on what you can do. And this one's gonna be a really cool one about getting clear. At the end of the show today, we're also going to have some time to get some live Q&A with me, which we don't really get to do ever at all unless we're doing this show. Uh, so save your questions for the end. In the comments, you can put in a hashtag Aaron's advice. And don't forget, those that share this when we're live, uh, you also get some free goodies. We don't know what they are, but we always work it out by the end, don't we? We always give you yeah, guys you some, do. we work some, some stuff out, right? We gave away some free VIP tickets last time to our next event next week. Yeah. I would love to do that event again. However, um, it's completely sold out. So there'll be no, make sure I don't give away any VIP tickets. Make sure that doesn't happen, right? It, it'll probably happen, yeah, exactly. The team will be happy. So let's get into the first one. This segment I call the biz news. Right, biz news. Let's talk about the biz news. So. Um, if you've been right across uh, the business news Australia and uh, worldwide, there's some really cool stuff that's happened. Um, this guy, I don't know whether it's just intentional now, um, you know, when it comes to him getting in the biz news, but this guy's in every, every news channel now. So if you thought, you know, Trump was the guy that was all over Twitter, this is my second most favorite, actually, I don't even like watching Trump on Twitter, but I hear about in the news, but my, my favorite entrepreneur on Twitter has got to be none other than Elon Musk. So what is Elon Musk up to now? So in the biz news, uh, he, this is recent, literally, literally like 24 hours ago, he goes on a um, Twitter rampage and um, decides to say that he's probably going to buy his company back and make it private again. So in other words, he's going to have to come up with $82 billion to uh, buy his company back, which would be the largest buyback in the history of the world. So uh, if he can pull it off, that'll be good. But why? Because he gets, all, he gets annoyed when everyone's going up and down about the share price. He's been quoted as saying to investors, if you don't like the way they run the company, if you're, if you're worried about the share price going up and down, then maybe you should own our shares. I kind of like that. He sent an email out to his, um, to his employees and he said that we're trying to create an environment for Tesla to be able to operate best. And if that means losing investors, then so be it. I like it. Uh, but it closed at $379 US uh, last night, which is 11% um, up from Monday. And that was because people were looking at possibly a private buyout. So there you go. I reckon that's one way to sh see your share price up. Just uh, say something fun on social media every day. What do you reckon? Elon Musk, Tesla. I don't have a Tesla. One of my students does, Jared. We always have a debate about this. Shouts out, um, shouts out to Jared. Jared Carmen, if you're watching, hope the Tesla's good. I wouldn't know if it is because you can't hear it driving anyway. This is a debate that we always have. Um, personally, I don't think you have a car if you can't actually hear it. Let me know if you think in the comments. Um, coming from a Bentley driver. All right, number two. Second in the biz news. Um, this is a really interesting one um, because it comes from, um, from the retail sector and specifically around, um, around Coles and Woolworths. But it was, it was a company that does a lot of reporting um, called the Nielsen Report. And they do a huge amount of research across sectors right across the world. And they came out with a report that I thought was really interesting. Get this, right? 
In Australia, there is $51 billion spent on promoted sales within the retail, uh, manufacturer and retail sector, right? $51 billion is spent on sales. They estimate that um, they're, they're promoted sales, by the way, not on sales, promoted sales. So that's when people say, hey, get 50% off, get, you know, whatever. They did a report and they found that 48% of what the majors, so we're talking Woolworths, we're talking Coles, the majors have been discounting 48% of that, of that 48 billion, 51 billion, 48% of that, there was no need to discount because consumers would have bought it anyway. Can you imagine that? And the discounted percentage is $11.3 billion. So in other words, they've said that Coles and Woolworths have basically thrown away $11.3 billion in the last 12 months because they're discounting items that we would already purchase even if it wasn't discounted, right? Why is that really important? I mean, I can't help but pull out a, you know, a mentoring chunk from that, but people go on these discount you know, rampages and they go and start focusing on discounting things like their number one selling products or their, you know, their, 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 their um, entry level products or something like that into, into their business. Coles, Woolworths, biggest supermarket chains in Australia, market research has been done is are losing $11.3 billion just on their discounting and not understanding what they should discount and whether they should be doing the discounts in the first place at all. Pretty incredible if you think about it. So a huge, huge uh, release has come and I'm interested to see whether they start doing all the, uh, all the discounts again. What do you think, Connor? Are you gonna stop buying eggs and, and, um, eggs and bread? What, from retail? Yeah, discounted now, eggs and bread? Nah, I'll probably still do it. See? That's my point, they know what they're talking about. $11 billion, there you go. Don't discount everything if you are, don't discount stuff that people are gonna buy anyway. There you go, there's a learning point of that. Number two, and uh, number three actually, last thing in the biz news for me, is a company I've been watching very closely um, called Zipco, Zipco. Uh, these guys are very similar to Afterpay. Now if you're not been alive for the last 12 months, you will not have heard of Afterpay. Um, but Afterpay are probably the biggest moving ASX listed business right now. Now Afterpay, as it says on the tin, they're focusing on this buy now, pay later type, you know, type um, analogy, which is, which we've said before is not a new thing. I mean, I can remember back to my mum, my mum having lay-bys at Kmart and Target. Lay-bys at Kmart. Did you have a lay-by? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. I still remember saving up for one of my first uh, video games, it was on lay-by. I like it. There you go. There you go. So listen, these guys, Zip, so Zipco and Afterpay, they obviously allow you to buy products, um, not services at this point, um, but um, they do products under $1,000 for Afterpay. So you've got Zip that are in, in, in the game as well, and they've been in the game a little bit longer than Afterpay. These guys have doubled their revenues, so they're a payment disruptor, doubled their revenues, 500 million in sales, and they're, they're predicting another doubling as well of their revenues. This market, the, the buy now, pay, pay later market, um, they're, they're, they're thinking that this is going to be you know, a three to four billion dollar market in Australia in the next 12 months. Afterpay itself did 2.2 billion in sales for the financial year 18 that's just finished as well with 2.2 million customers. Now that's pretty hu huge, um, considering that company's only been around for a couple of years. So this whole buy now, pay after um, is, is, is seeing a huge amount of increase right across all the disruptors. And Zip, who have already doubled their revenues this year, they're tipped to do the exact same thing next year. So watch these guys. And, uh, and also, what's the learning point from that? If you've got a business that can qualify for an after pay, a Zip pay or something like that, well, they may be leveraging this mark. I mean, this is huge specifically amongst uh, millennials. Um, it, obviously, this is, a, this is a big one amongst millennials. Now, what I like about Zip as well, I've been watching them. They did an acquisition about, um, I think it was about 12 months ago, and they bought Pocketbook. Pocketbook were this personal, personal finance management app with 500,000 users um, in 2016. So they purchased great data directly for the, the people that would be wanting to use their services. Maybe that's hence the reason why these guys have doubled in the last 12 months as well. So these guys are doing really well. Pay attention and in the biz news, watch a lot of these afterpay guys. They're doing very, very well. This buy now, pay later market is exploding and definitely makes my biz news. So that is my biz news. What do you think? No. There you go. Just, just just tell me. Tell me. Oh, we have a studio audience. Yeah, you can hear the yeah. claps, right? Yeah. We don't, don't we have, I thought we had a button. We don't have a button for no, claps? No. Yeah. We actually have a studio audience for claps as well. Isn't that good, right? We're, 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 we're getting claps. The, 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 and we're live. Hello, Instagram. How are you guys going? You guys are live as well? 
So we have to just see if our studio audience this time, uh, which are some of our new recruits in, 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 um, in our business, I wonder if these guys are going to be as excitable as last, last, because that last Aaron Live, I mean, there was, there was a ruckus in the studio. Yeah, yeah. There was a ruckus, right? And someone even offered to come into Aaron Live and bring their own chair and hang out with us as well. We should start doing that. We should offer like a chair or something like yeah. that with like a donation to the charity. Yeah, we yeah. should do that. You should write that down. Yeah. Next, we call this one called, this segment called Crushing It. Crushing It. Now, every month I try and find something I think is pretty cool to talk about that's crushing it. Now, this one, I laughed out loud um, when I saw this one. I love this idea. This is really cool. So this company, which I'll tell you what this company is in a minute. This company has only been around really for the last couple of years. They're an ASX company and they made waves in the scientific community um, because they, I would just love to be on the board of this company. I'll do it for free. They have anti-drone jamming guns. This company is called Drone Shield. Drone Shield detect, analyze, alert, and respond, AKA shoot drones out of the sky uh, for, um, for corporates, for events. I mean, these guys have been protecting the Boston Marathon the last two years in a row and a bunch of really cool stuff. This company is doing huge things because companies that don't want drones hanging around um, their, their businesses or their, you know, anywhere, their place. I mean, I think everyone's gonna have this, like a turret on their house yeah. that just shoots down a drone. So these guys are doing huge things. These guys are anti-drone technology. Uh, and a lot of this is actually this um, technology from Australia, which we love, with partnership with Intelligence Security Integration Australia. And this stuff um, called Rapid Scout is counter drone technology, which detects it and defeats it. Doesn't that just sound cool? Can you show me that picture again? Yeah, I'm sorry, we gotta look at that picture. Show again. me that picture again. Look at that. that. Look at that. That's How a terrifying. That's that a be? gun. You're, just, you're at the park with that's your a son, gun. Playing with the new drone. One sec. I just need to take care of this. Yeah. You see some. Can you imagine that? Like it's like a new new way of clay shooting. You know, like it should be Olympic sport. Oh, we should just oh, throw yeah. the drones out. Olympic That'd sport. Cool, yeah. A drone. There you go. So drone shield. I like that they've looked at it and they've said, you know what? Why can't we do something a bit different? Everyone's getting drones out there. And even on a serious note, what happened a couple of days ago? The Venezuelan president was attacked um, by a drone with explosives on it. Um, you know, when they were having some ceremony there. I think it's Venezuela. I hope it's Venezuela. Um, and someone's nodding, so hopefully it is. <laughs> yeah, you know. But I have a lot of nodders around me, so I don't know whether that's yeah, true, right? Certainly. So possibly, potentially, the Venezuelan government. But listen, on a serious note, like... Why didn't they have that technology? And there's a military application for this as well. Um, you know, to stop drones from, from getting around places. Like, that's pretty amazing. Can you imagine? Yeah. You shoot it down, you're like, oh shit, that's Domino's delivering my pizza. <laughs> oh no, I'm so pissed off, right? Can you imagine? I love it. All right, I just want to do that. I'll do that job for free. I'll do the drone, drone shooting job for free, let alone join the board as well. Love it. They get my crushing it. Drone shield. Love it. Excellent. All right, next up, after the very quick video break, um, we're gonna be talking Mentor Minute. I've got something special for you, um, talking about Mentor Minute. And, uh, and this, but with this little video I wanna quickly show you, um, we've got something coming up next month. We're pretty excited, I only do it once a year, and uh, it is by far one of the most favorite things I get to do. And it's a course called Sales Mastery. Hope you guys love this little video. When we get back, it's Mentor Minute. See you in a minute. What can I say? Amazing experience, intense, absolutely what I needed, not what I expected, and life-changing. That's all I can say is life-changing, absolutely life-changing. It was just about creating that path and actually being there and just, it's just amazing how things just fall into place when you do trust what's put in front of you. Everyone that implements gets a result. I know my worth and I raise to my worth. My question is really simple. Who chose your worth? Who dares put a price tag on you without your permission? You're an incredible human being with an incredible story. And until you decide to choose your worth, you are going to be living by default and not by design. I feel as though I finally have a grasp on exactly where I want to take my business. 
Hi guys, I'm Jamie. After working with Darren now for seven months, uh, it's been an amazing journey, but we've been able to turn over now $85,000. In the past six months, I have earned 100000 directly into my pocket. So Alan has helped me to make, last year we made $986,000. In the last three months, I've earned $54,000. I've really enjoyed the process. It's not about the money now, it's actually how many people I can change. Ten minutes ago, guys, I've achieved 50% more commission from a vendor who was trying to put a price tag on me by applying some of the stuff that Aaron has taught us in the last two days. I've had a deal that was lagging for three weeks. Everyone was at a stalemate and what Aaron taught me enabled me to close that deal while I was here today. And I've uh, done uh, $1.3 million in sales in eight weeks since meeting Aaron Sansoni. It's been amazing. Uh, last three days, sales mastery, been playing full out. Loving it. All right, welcome back. That was Sales Mastery. I'm really pumped about that one. I was watching that one, just rem reminiscing from uh, last year when we did that in the Gold Coast. This year, it's gonna be in uh, Sydney. So if you wanna learn more about that, head over to aaronsansoni.com and you'll have a look in the, uh, the live events. You'll be able to hang out with us at Sales Mastery. Who in the room is excited about Sales Mastery? Anybody excited about Sales Mastery? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These guys loving it, we're excited, we love doing this thing. So listen, this is what we call the Mentor Minute. So the Mentor Minute for us is where I get an opportunity to be able to share with you guys something different every single month. And I always get racked my brains to think, you know what, what's really relevant right now? Now, you know, last episode I spoke a lot about pivoting plans, being around mid-year and things you can do to start doing that. Um, you know, and the, and the last time I spoke about Mark Randolph, what I learned from Mark when I got to hang out with him a couple of years ago um, at the Entrepreneur's Summit, which is coming up next week. The very first one we ever did was with Mark Randolph, the co-founder of Netflix, um, a couple of years ago. This time I thought, you know what, what can you do as a business owner, as an entrepreneur out there, just to get absolute clarity on a daily basis. Now, there's a lot of things we can talk about when it comes to clarity, but I want to go through a couple of things that I think every single business owner really needs to understand about every single business. Now, I am gonna talk about some numbers, and when I talk about numbers, sometimes people kind of tune out because they're like, stop talking about numbers, Aaron, but listen, it's critical. So let me give you a couple of things you guys are gonna write down, and after today, or after the show's finished, you're gonna get a chance to work this out. So here's one thing you need to learn. To get clear as a business owner, here's one thing you need to know. And I gotta tell you, when it comes to the business owners I speak to, 80, 90% of the time, they do not know what this is. Burn rate. A burn rate is how much money do you need to spend in your business every single month to keep that business running? In other words, what do you burn through? What's your utility bills? What's your rent bills? What's your base staff bills? What's your, what's your payroll if you've got payroll taxes, your superannuation? What are your base charges? What are your base bills that you need to cover? That's what's called your burn rate. What do you burn through to keep your business open? Now, why is that important? Because when it comes to looking at the kind of revenue goal that you want to have, well, we have to make sure we're making enough revenue to be able to cover off all of our burn rate or we're going backwards. So one of the things I want you to do is to get clear is I want you to start working out in your business or if you have multiple businesses, what are your burn rates? Why is this important? Because if you wanna win this thing called business, well, you have gotta get clear. And a lot of business owners are so clouded in their judgment or don't understand the next step because they don't know the basics. They don't actually understand what they're doing. They wake up every day and say, let me try this campaign or let me try this little you know, discount or let me try this to, you know, let me hire this person or fire this person. I want you to understand and have clarity on where your business is at. And to do that, there's a couple of key things. One, you gotta know your burn rate. That means how much does it cost for you to run your business every single month? You're gonna know that. Second thing you need to know is your revenue goal. Now your revenue goal is your top line revenue, right? So how much sales do you need to bring into your business? So if you've got a burn rate, cost you $10,000 a month to run your business and your sales goal is not at least that, we're gonna break, we're not gonna, we're, we're not, we're gonna break even if it's, if it's the same, if it's below that, we're gonna go backwards. So we have to start planning for these things and know what you need to put into your business to then be able to achieve your revenue goals as well. But revenue doesn't equal profit. So that's why we have to work out our profit goals. So I talk to a lot of businesses and they say, hey, we wanna do $10,000 in sales this week or we wanna do $50,000 in sales. Well, if you know your burn rate, 
you know how much it costs for you to run your business, you know what your revenue goal, goal is going to be, then you can start to work out what your profit goal is going to be. Because other than the, the, the benefits that your company has in terms of your customers, your products, your services, the things that it can do for people or for businesses, whether it's B2B or B2C, we're gonna work out what profit you wanna pull from the company. And every time I get to meet our business owners, a large percentage of those people are not taking a wage out of their business that is even qualifying slightly to the hours that they put into the time the time they put into their business all the stress that they take home so if you don't have a profit goal well then what's the point of running the business from a financial perspective so I want you to work out and get some clarity around what is your burn rate what does it cost for you to run your business what is your revenue goal and what is your profit goal and then break these down into these KPIs key performance indicators right or what I call critical factors so what does that look like monthly how many sales do you need to have monthly? How much revenue do you need to have monthly? What is your profit goal every month? What is your burn rate every month? So listen, you might have a business where you've got your base operating expenses, but for you to go out there and make a sale, you have to sell a product or a service. There might be a cost attached to that, right? So you don't have a business that sells you know, pens, right? Great example. You've got the staff members, you've got all your overheads, everything you need. But then if you go sell a pen for $2, you've got to go buy the pen from somewhere else or you've got to get it manufactured. So there's a cost of good, right? Which means you've got to work out what are your profit goals and break these down into KPIs. You can't just say, what's my sales goal? Because your sales goal without the cost for you to run your business and the cost of you to sell that good, you never can work out how much profit you want to make. Then you've got this fun thing called tax. Have you heard of that before? It's a fun thing called tax, right? So you've got company tax and you've got personal tax. Get great advice around this. Now, you've got to work this out. If you're a business owner and one of these things you're not doing or more of these things you're not doing, then what are we, where, where are we going in our business? What is the point of putting a business plan together if you don't know what these things are? So I'll give you a tip. I do this annually. Every year I do this annually and then I revisit this throughout the year as well when it comes to our businesses because your burn rate changes, your revenue goals might change, your profit goals might change and you might have different KPIs for different parts of your business as well. Once you've got those four things locked in, then by the way, if you've got questions, that's why we have Aaron's advice at the end. So make sure you ask your questions on this stuff, right? So make sure you write that in the comments using the hashtag Aaron's advice, because when we go to this, we're gonna look for the comments that are towards the top as well. So make sure you guys get in first. Next thing I wanna talk about is your marketing rocks. Your rocks are things that are absolutely critical in your day that you need to get done. So there's two different types of marketing rocks and plan that you need to have to have clarity on where you're going in your business. So remember, we're talking about clarity. Burn rate, revenue goals, your profit goals, and what your, your monthly breakdown of what you need to achieve is. The second thing is focusing on your marketing rocks. So when I say a rock, I mean something that just has to happen, right? So there's different types of marketing. There's two different types of marketing. One is an ROI strategy, and one is a brand awareness. Let me explain to you the difference between the two. ROI strategy is when you're asking somebody to be able to purchase something or to give you something in exchange for it. So you might be asking them to come in and get a 10% discount off something or a buy one, get one, uh, one free. It's asking for an action. So in your business, you need to be clear on not only the four money-based things I've just spoken to you about, but you also need to be clear on what are the marketing strategies that you have. What's the return on investment? ROI stands for return on investment. So if you invest a dollar into Facebook, are you getting $50 back? Are you getting $2 back? You know, and the question then becomes, how much are you willing to spend to be able to buy your customers? If you understand your costs, you might say, listen, I can spend $50,000 in a month because I'm gonna make $80,000 in a month, so it's fine. You might say, I might spend $1,000 in a month because I know I can make $3,000. When you know your numbers from these things I just shared with you a second ago, when you get that, it helps you when it comes to winning, when it comes to your marketing. So there's two different things. One is a strategy that's asking someone to take a purchase action. Two is a brand awareness. So let me give you an idea of a brand awareness. You know, you drive down the freeway and you see the big billboard and it has just an Apple symbol in the middle of it and nothing else. Well, that's a branding strategy because Apple is saying, just so you know, we're Apple. That's all they're saying, right? Just so you know, we're Apple and we're still here. You know, you don't see Apple saying, well, come in and buy one Mac, get one free, right? Why? Because they've got a brand. And as soon as they start discounting their brand, they start discounting the perception of what their brand actually is. So it's really important, you know, the difference between these two. Every business should have branding strategies and marketing strategies, but you've got to know the difference and you've got to execute those things so you get clear. So in your business right now, what are your marketing strategies? 
And what's your return on the investment on those? And what are your brand awareness strategies? Like let's say for instance, you might volunteer your time to go out there and you know, speak at um, you know, a local BNI or go out there and help at a, you know, a, you know, a local charity. All those things are networking opportunities. They're branding opportunities for you and for your business. They're not revenue generating opportunities unless people wanna learn more about what you do. So you've gotta have both strategies happening to give yourself clarity so you start to win. Final thing I wanna share with you is the sales campaigns, right? The sales campaigns are critical. So if you're running your business right now, you gotta have some clarity on what sort of campaigns you're doing. Are you doing campaigns to your existing database of people that are working with you or to new people that are trying to find out about you? Do you have a campaign or a, a process that's speaking to both people that know who you are and already buy from you and don't know who you are and don't already buy from you? Do you have sales campaigns for both of those types of markets? A lot of businesses I find are so focused on bringing people in the front door that they forget there's already people in there. And we know that customers that have already bought from you are 70% more likely to buy from you again as opposed to 5% as likely to buy from you from the first time. So you've already done the hard yards. You've already got them into your business. You're already delivering on what you should be doing. How about we create campaigns for those people to be able to move into other products and services that you or your business might have? Does that make sense? It makes sense so far. And the last thing is my favorite word in the English dictionary. It's not love, it's empire, right? So you gotta know for yourself, if you've been to empire, by the way, who's been to empire mastery? In the comments, if you've been to empire mastery, you wanna, you wanna write it in so I know who you guys are. Empire. Getting some clarity around your business is critical, but knowing what your plans are around growing your empire is critically important as well. Empire is nothing more than a collection of businesses and companies' investments that are working for you. It's a thing that I mastered, and it's a thing that I get to teach right around Australia. I'm teaching it at the end of uh, the year, actually, in Melbourne again. So listen, what are your empire goals? What's the strategies that you've got in place to be able to build your empire? What does that look like for you? Do you have some clarity on that? Why is this important? Because if you want to get out of the focus of the here and now, like what's going on in my life right this second, then one of the best ways to do it is to future pace yourself and say, okay, where am I going to go? What is my goal? What does my empire look like? What do I want to have outside of the business or the challenges that I have right now? It starts to give you that fuel to keep going because you think about what your business, what your life is going to look like after you get through the next month, after you get through that next challenge as well. So they're my keys. You want to win, you want to have clarity, then one of the things I want to share with you guys today is about money, right? Those four key things, your marketing plan, the different sorts of plans you need, your sales strategies, and of course, it wouldn't be any business advice for me unless the word empire is in it as well. So I get to talk to you guys about empire. Hope you learned something from that. Aaron's advice, I'm gonna be answering some questions live on air at the end of the show today. So make sure you put those in the comments now. Hashtag Aaron's advice. It can be about anything I've talked about so far, or it could just be about anything in your business right now. You get a chance to ask me any questions. You can either put it in the comments or you can email studio at aaronsansoni.com that will come in live to the studio. Put your comments on Facebook, on Instagram, and uh, we're gonna get to Aaron's advice a little bit later on. So we're going to be back in a moment with something pretty cool, but by popular demand, I've gotta show you this video again. This is Sales Mastery, it's coming up. Have a bit of a look, tell me what you think. It's gonna be eight pillars and I can't wait to do it again. Here's a quick insight into three days with me learning all about Sales Mastery, check it out. What can I say? Amazing experience, intense, absolutely what I needed, not what I expected, and life-changing. That's all I can say is life-changing, absolutely life-changing. It was just about creating that path and actually being there and just, it's just amazing how things just fall into place when you do trust what's put in front of you. Everyone that implements gets a result. I know my worth and I raise to my worth. My question is really simple. Who chose your worth? Who dares put a price tag on you without your permission? You're an incredible human being with an incredible story. And until you decide to choose your worth, you are gonna be living by default and not by design. I feel as though I finally have a grasp on exactly where I wanna take my business. 
Hi guys, I'm Jamie. After working with Aaron now for seven months, uh, it's been an amazing journey, but we've been able to turn over now $85,000. In the past six months, I have earned $100,000 directly into my pocket. So Aaron has helped me to make, last year we made $986,000. In the last three months, I've earned $54,000. And I've really enjoyed the process. It's not about the money now, it's actually how many people I can change. Ten minutes ago, guys, I've achieved 50% more commission from a vendor who was trying to put a price tag on me by applying some of the stuff that Aaron has taught us in the last two days. I've had a deal that was lagging for three weeks. Everyone was at a stalemate and what Aaron taught me enabled me to close that deal while I was here today. And I've uh, done uh, $1.3 million in sales in eight weeks since meeting Aaron Sansoni. It's been amazing. Uh, last three days, sales mastery, been playing full out. Loving it. Welcome back. We're in the studio for Aaron Live. Uh, it's been taken over by Mr. Bobblehead. Um, I need to get a new one because that's when I had hair. So I need to get a new bobblehead. Can someone send me a bobblehead into the studio, please? Send it to uh, studio at aaronsensei.com and send us in a new bobblehead. We need to get a new one, Connor. Oh, definitely. Honestly, we... it's, it's, it's one of the most complained about things. It is, I think. I've received eight letters today just about Mr. Bobblehead. So we're going to put him over there. Let's get into it. Next up, I hope you guys enjoyed Mental Minute, by the way. If you did, please make sure you put it in the comments. If you didn't, I don't care. No, I'm joking. I love you anyway. So can you make sure that you guys put the comments in if you want to know anything about what I've shared with you so far today? or if you want uh, a chance to get your questions answered live on Aaron Live, on Instagram and on Facebook. Hope you guys are having fun on Instagram. You get to see the behind the scenes on Instagram as well. Facebook, hope you, go, hope you guys are having fun. Have you shared it yet? Make sure you share it if you want to get a prize. What the prize is, I don't know. That's a, it, could be, it could be a BMW. Um, it could be a wristband. You know, that's, that's what you should do, shouldn't <laughs> it? You should give the disparity of prizes and yeah. just see what happens. It could be a, it could be a million dollars, um, and it could be a wristband. <laughs> I keep saying wristband twice just because I'm aiming towards possibly a wristband. Love it. All right, next segment. This one we call WTF. In other words, what the fuck is going on? All right, my, it's my favorite graphic, Jackie Chan. It's got to be my favorite graphic that we have. All right, so WTF. I've got a lot of WTFs within this WTF con that we need to discuss. It's so loaded. It's it, this is loaded. This is loaded. So listen, Coles, they did a complete double black backflip recently um, because just one day after the supermarket giant confirmed it would, it would offer customers free plastic bags indefinitely, it then set a cutoff date for the complimentary dag, bags. The supermarket chief executive, John Durkin, sent an email to 115,000 staff to talk about it. The email, which was on news.com.au, uh, um, confirms that the supermarket is extended its free bag offer until August 29. They've said we're extending the complimentary bag offer to Wednesday, 29th of August for all customers across Queensland, New South Wales, Vic and WA. So for some reason, South Australia, Tasmania and uh, Northern Territory, you don't matter. To them because then I extend it to you. The double backflip allows a massive backlash because what happened was environmental groups and other retailers weren't happy about it because as you know, everyone's going through this let's get rid of plastic bag phase, right? And they said they're gonna do it indefinitely. Then they said they're not going to. Then they said it's gonna be free. Then they said they're gonna charge you 15 cents. Now here's what's happened. Every time somebody has complained, they've gone and changed their entire business strategy to suit that one person. That's part of the problem. Here's the second part of the problem. We can't solve a business issue like these guys have. Like, how do you carry our stuff out of our store into your home, but you've got to bring a bag? Could you imagine if cafes, which is a problem, because there's a billion cups that go in landfill a year in Australia alone. I know I've got a statistic on that from one of my students who's doing something about that. Shout out to you, by the way. Uh, could you imagine if they would never serve you a coffee unless you brought in a mug? Would that impact revenue? Of course it would. Because if you had your own mug, you'd make your own coffee in the back room of the kitchen at the office, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got to find a solution where it's not about somebody has to bring their own bags. And then, I, and I said to you, I said to you before, am I the only person that thought those new bags were were environmentally friendly? No, so they're like eighty percent. They're made of like eighty percent recycled materials, but they're still, but they're still plastic. Well, yeah, and they're still so they're not they're not the biodegradable, plant. right? No, they're still plastic. So you, then went from, made of old so you went from giving plastic bags to giving plastic bags. They're like, because yeah, you can reuse them. 
that the idea is that you'd reuse them. But, but wasn't that the point of the green bags? What happened to the green ones? Redundant when they've like turns into when, when they've gone from hey, we've got these bags, they're fifteen cents, you can reuse them to going okay, you know, what, take as many of these plastic bags as you want. So now you get the plastic bags for free yeah. that were fifteen cents, yeah. and the free is what caused the problem in the first place because yeah, you got a plastic bag for every little yeah. thing you got. People aren't, aren't going to reuse them. Now. But on top of that, solve the problem yourself. You're a multi-billion-dollar giant. Work it out yourself. Get paper bags. Yeah, yeah. It's I not bring, hard. I bring the green bag. What are, I, just, I don't understand the business model. Can you imagine? Like, oh, you're going to go buy a car from the Mercedes dealer across the road, but the tyres are flat. Mm. So before you go, can you bring a fucking pump? I don't know, can you believe that? Get your shit together. You guys make enough money. Jesus Christ. I tell you. WTF. You get my WTF. And on top of that, you get my WTF because I actually thought those bit bags are biodegradable. No. Right? What's going on? Don't get it. WTF. Coles, Woolworths, everyone using plastic bags. Sort it out. Stop making it your customer's problem. Do something about it. That gets my WTF. But on the reverse side... Yeah, conversely. <laughs> conversely, I also get to talk about one segment that I call called Love It. This one I get is uh, my segment I get to talk about, which are things that I'm loving. Right, now this one's cool. Another Australian uh, idea. Uh, these guys are over in Brooks, Brookfield Place, precinct in Perth. Shout out to WA, all of my peeps over in WA. Um, this is a restaurant, there's a bunch of restaurants over there, right? And these guys have got together to create the Homeless Healthcare Soup Kitchen Fundraiser. And they're doing it because, um, you might not know this, but um, it's uh, ne uh, the 6th to the 10th, where it's been held of the month now, which is which is now, yeah. is um, National Homelessness Week uh, for 2018. And so they're bringing together local cafes, businesses, volunteers, and the general public. They're doing this whole um, cup of soup available um, for everybody. If it is visitors, they come, they spend 10 bucks. Um, Basilia's getting involved, the Apple Daily, um, Churchill's getting involved, the Gazette's getting involved, the Heritage and Primal Pantry. All these guys donate everything um, to create this. Uh, and 100% of these profits go to the homeless healthcare um, uh, process over there, which is, which, is, which is really looking after not just homelessness, but also marginalized people in the communities as well. So I love this. Business is getting together, um, finding what they can do together to be able to make an impact. And you know, it's great. It's great. You know, and it's also on the business side of things, it's also great for them from a PR perspective to be getting involved in giving back and doing things that are important for the community as well. So you guys over in Brookfield Place in Perth, uh, you guys definitely get my love on it for you guys getting together and pitching and helping out the homeless and getting involved in um, the um, homelessness awareness uh, week as well in 2018, which is a really important part. You know, part of my foundation, the Aaron Sansoni Foundation, you guys can check it out if you want, aaronsansonifoundation.org. Uh, we, we have different things that we focus on every year. And this year we're focusing on um, feeding um, the disadvantaged and, and sometimes uh, you know, people that are homeless or close to uh, through our work with our partners, Oz Harvest. Shout out to Oz Harvest. Our goal is to uh, feed 250,000 Australians um, this year, we've already fed, uh, I, I think the number's about 125,000, so far this year, and our goal is to be able to achieve that by Christmas this year. So I'm big on trying to do things to be able to better the community, but also, you know, it, definitely some of the people that can't afford to feed themselves. Right here in the, our very own country, I've traveled to more than 60 countries around the world, and, uh, and I've done a lot around the world, and I encourage people to start looking at some of the, some of the challenges that we have, whether it be, um, uh, food and, and feeding those that are in need, or whether it be getting behind something that we've got right now, which is the Homelessness Awareness Week um, that we've got here for 2018 as well. Love this, businesses can get involved in this, it's not too, too late to get involved in this. Why don't you guys see what you can do as a business owner, how you can get involved in the week that's currently happening now. So well done to you guys out there in uh, Brookfield Place. You get my love it. Perfect. All right, next up. I like this one. This is always fun. Oh, it's always fun, isn't it? Yeah, this is my favourite part. My favourite part of it. We always have the favourite part for last, right? So this is what I call my top 10. Aaron's top 10. So every single episode, I try and uh, think about what I want to share with you as a top 10. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it's weird. Sometimes it's just wrong. Um, sometimes it's you know, very serious. Um, but this one is not so serious. This is 10... Bizarre businesses. Now, I've done bizarre businesses before. 
but it turns out, but it turns out, there's a lot more bizarre businesses out there. So yeah. we should do this every episode, huh? You got a bizarre business that's not on my list? Can you please let me know? Yeah. So I want to talk about the top ten bizarre businesses. These are great. We got this from um, MSN. Um, this current list. Let's get into Aaron's top ten list. This is ten more, more bizarre businesses. Let's kick off with number 10, which is one of my favorites. And this will set the scene with the rest of these, by the way. When you, if 10's good, you know that there's like, fuck, one's gonna be amazing, right? So number 10, Sisters of the Valley. They sell medical marijuana that is grown by nuns. What an oxymoron. Sisters of the Valley are a group of self-styled nuns who grow organic medical marijuana in California. The nuns who aren't affiliated with, a, with anything Catholic, how are you a nun then? Um, or any established church, produce a range of, of um, oils, cannabis oils, and, um, and a range of products for medical marijuana purposes. Can I go back to the point that how are you a nun if you're not a part of yeah, a I religious discipline? So can we be nuns? I guess can we be nuns? So if I just say we're a nun, we're a nun. <laughs> yes. I mean, maybe, if you Google nun, what does it say? I think you gotta like, you at least gotta have the uniform and stuff. Luan, can you Google nun for me? I want to know what that says. <laughs> if you're an, I, I'm kind of, I'm, I kind of feel like to be a nun, you need to be a part of something religious. Don't you think? Some would argue that marijuana no, that's obviously that's it's it's that's obviously completely against I'm sure completely against whatever's written in the in the good book, you know. But sorry, a member of a religious community of women typically living under vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. Okay, so you lit it. So not only are they not nuns because they're not part of a part of something that's Catholic or religious, but on top of that, they're going directly against the 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 good the good word of the Lord, right? So. What's more interesting is these nuns um, are selling this marijuana. They're not really nuns. They, you've, you've, you've heard it first. Oh, because it's medicinal. It's okay, right? Okay, okay. Let's see if that's it. Chapter seven. The you know lon uh, of, of John. Let's see what it says. Uh, okay, and that's number ten, right? Can you imagine? Number nine. I like this one. This is pretty good. Number nine. Herds for hire. These guys. These guys are herds for hire. Is an Australian firm that rents out goats. Not God of all things, no. goats, actual, physical, real, live goats. Yeah. To get rid of garden weeds and out of control vegetation. The service is eco-friendly than a lawnmower and negates the need for toxic weed killers. Who gets rid of the goat shit? Yeah, true. You got a lovely lawn that's covered in goat shit. That's there's a new, there's a new yeah, business. A new, <laughs> yeah. No one needs drones that have been shot out, right? I like it. Number eight. Well, I, I actually like this. This was, this was a funny one, right? Yeah. Number eight. This is called the Anger Room. This is the room that you can hire. Launched in 2008 in Dallas. The Anger Room provides a stressed out for stressed out clients who want a room full of furniture, TVs, and all sorts of other stuff that they can smash up. Is that the, directly from their website? Come and smash our stuff up. Yeah. To their heart's content. This is a trashable room that simulates an actual workplace, kitchen, living room, or added for added authenticity. Yeah. Can you imagine that? The, uh, their website has a video of um, Ozzy Osbourne enjoying the uh, an anger room. So it's endorsed. Yeah. That is an endorsement. If, yeah. someone, and if they want me to endorse that, keep your money. Yeah, I'm going yeah. to endorse <laughs> it. I'm going to endorse it anyway. Right? I love that. That'll be super cool, huh? Yeah. Number eight, number seven. This is just cruel. This is cruel in the first three. Number seven, seven more bizarre businesses. Ship your enemies glitter. And online services that you get to send out birthday cards or letters, and this is a letter, right? Yeah, yeah. Where you open it up and it's designed so that they don't know what's in it, so they open it up and glitter goes all over them. Yeah. Glitter is just, I, I heard a comedian describe glitter as the herpes of supplies or something like that right uh, or art, art supplies and it's it's right you i like that it, it's, it's i like that so first we had a problem that people are sending bloody anthrax and shit around the place now <laughs> now they're sending now, now they're sending glitter around the place if jesus oh that glitter bomb so glitter bomb i want to do that for an invitation hopefully yeah, people don't yeah. like it i like that idea do you like that i like that yeah, my daughter's fifth birthday is coming up if you're invited you're getting a glitter bomb <laughs> like it all right number six this is uh, cross, what's this, cross star, 
Crosta Prison. Crosta Prison is, a, is a, this is another oxymoron, a lot of them are, a hardcore jail vacation experience. For only $20 a night, guests can stay in a hardcore jail pris- a prison as a patron, sleep in an iron barred cell subject to regular death threats and sounds of gunfire in the yard and harsh punishment, including cleaning the toilets. I'll charge you nineteen dollars a night, and you can come and tra- clean my toilets. What do you think? Wait, hey? Show that picture again, what? real quick. Look at I like that. Look, look, they're about to laugh. The, yeah, the two guys. Look Definitely gonna laugh. Oh, I would. That oh, guy oh, in the oh, middle, oh, I would oh, punish him hard. Oh, a, oh, a for the sweater, and yeah, and yeah. and B because he's about to laugh. Do you think? Yeah. I would for sure. Number six, number five. These are great. We have to do more of these every week. Can you vote? If you guys vote, you want more of these. We're just gonna do more of these every week. This is like this. Number five. This is called Dick's Last Resort. This is a restaurant bar and chain which is run in the US and it's renowned for its rude staff members. Treating people with similar disdain, the US chain Dick's Last Resort purposely hires the rudest, most obnoxious wait and bar staff imaginable. So customers actually flock into their place of business so they can be verbally abused and get Patrons get placed dunce hats on top of their heads. Yeah. Can you imagine that? I, I mean, I'd just go knackers. Yeah, would you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so same thing happens at McDonald's. There you go. Love that. Isn't that cool? What a business idea. Where can we hire really rude weight staff? You know what I mean? There's a, there's a good percentage of people that would fall into that category, yeah, right? I feel like you double your, your what a business. potential... Um, what a business. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think it'd be great. I wouldn't go there personally because I'd like to enjoy my meal and not get yelled at by somebody else. Yeah. But why not? Number four, this company is called, this bizarre business is called, I do now, I don't. Wait, let me do that again. I do, now I don't. <laughs> Who didn't put an apostrophe here? Was that me or was that you? That might have been me. That was you, yeah. So I do, now I don't. There you go, that's better. So these guys, I do now, but I don't.com. These help um, fiance, uh, fiancés and people that have just divorced recently, divorcees, resell their rings. Booming online auction platform um, sp- spawned in 2007 uh, is for people that have just broken up when they've been engaged or they're recently divorced and want to sell their rings. And apparently it's doing very well. There you go. Why wouldn't you sell on eBay and say, you know, like when you sell a car and you say only one lady owner, you know, it's like a, it's like a Lamborghini Gallardo, you know, or something, you know, and you're like, oh, it's only one lady owner. She's in her eighties, you know, why wouldn't you do it for the ring? It's never been worn. There's no, you know, bad, bad, what is it called? Bad juju on the ring or whatever. All I know is that there's a lot of people that I don't think would like to have, can you imagine? Here's a ring. It's only being used by three other divorcees. Number three, potato parcel. Mail, personalized mail messages that get sent out, written on a potato and sent to people. Uh, Now this business, I've actually spoken about this business before. These guys make some serious coin sending potatoes to people with random messages written on them. What an idea by these guys, bizarre businesses. And uh, these guys uh, have uh, right around the world now. And these these guys makes tens of thousands of dollars a week in revenue, take your pa- potatoes away. When I talk about my numbers before, what's your burn rate? Uh, eight potatoes, you know, <laughs> a dollar a potato, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I was on, Love it. I went on their website to check them out while, you know, looking at the, the stuff for this episode, and their website is pretty goddamn cool. Like, I was on there for all of 30 seconds and had, like, ding, like, would you like to speak to an advisor about potatoes? <laughs> Can you imagine? Ding, okay. you want to spin this wheel? Maybe you get a free potato, maybe not. But I like that. Potatoes. I like that. I like that. So potatoes, right? Yes, but this is a, this is a booming business. I like that. What else can be written on and sent out? Pumpkins. Yeah, we've had glitter. We've had pumpkins. 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 Bananas. Why not? Watermelons. There you go. Like it. Good input. Number two. I feel like there's people that really want this. Number two. This is called the selfie toaster. You, yes, that's you watching this, have the opportunity to have your face toasted on bread in the morning for your loved ones. My wife eats toast sometimes. Um, 
I think this would be great. Can you imagine I'm like, honey, I've got to leave for work, but there's literally my face on your breakfast so you don't forget me. Um, what do you think? Bizarre, yet doing very well. Look, again, I, doing very well because it's so goddamn I love it. Genuinely, you, you have to buy Could you imagine? specifically designed toaster and like these plates that they like, they make in, I think, I like Oregon. It. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure that's, that's putting I'm pretty sure putting metal in your toaster yeah, is not going to yeah. work that work out, right? That's, that's a lot of to go like it. My number one bizarre business. This one's a bit bizarre, but I can totally understand it given the other things we've read so far. Doggles. These sunglasses are for pooches that were invented in 1997 by Ronnie Lulo, who wanted a pair of shades for his squinting dog. I just think that's how dogs are. Yeah. Um, the California native. Why is all the crazy stuff happening in California? Nuns, people that have, you know, you know goggles for their, their, their chihuahuas. Launched in Sunny soon after, the company now makes more than $3 million a year selling glasses yeah. to people that have dogs. I think that's why it's number one, is just because of the sheer amount of money that it makes. Love it. That's my top 10. Yeah. What do you reckon? Love it. All right, let's rock and roll to our uh, next up All is right. going to be. We've got time for at least a couple of questions. Okay, cool. Give me a couple of questions. We're on Insta, Sophia we're on Facebook. Chucked it in the comments. Thank you, Daniel. Says, hey, how Aaron's advice? Hi, Aaron. What would you suggest for dealing with customers hunting purely on the cheapest price when you specialize and offer high quality product, products and services? How to not let so many slip through your fingers? Daniel? Yes. Daniel. So here's what I would say, Daniel. Um, that question is a short one to answer, but it's, 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 there's a lot of moving parts to make it happen. Let me understand what you've just said to me. You want to be a premium and people are shopping you around, right? Well, to, to change that, you need to really change the whole business model. Like, let me give you an example. You know, when people go into, and again, I've talked about Apple before, they go into Apple, they're seldom are they going to sit there and bargain the guy down because he's going to go, that's how much it is, right? Because there's a whole process leading up to the, the value of what an Apple is, right? So if you wanna be in a market where you are the premium and you are the leader, then what has to change is everything from the way your market your marketing is done, the way your website looks, the way your branding looks, what's the look and the feel of the whole thing. Like some of you guys have been old enough and around long enough to remember Nespresso. I love to talk about Nespresso. Nespresso came out with their capsules, right? And the challenge that they had is that anyone could copy their capsules. So they had them in Coles and others kept coming into Coles, including Coles themselves, and they had their capsules are trying to maintain the price point of you know $2 a capsule. Others are coming in at 50 cents a capsule, whatever it may be. Nespresso pulled all their, their, their capsules out, set up an experience store so you could walk into Chadston or anywhere you know in Melbourne or anywhere else that you've got a shopping center and have an experience store where you get to walk around and see all the different pods and have tasting and all this kind of stuff so by the time you get to the end of it you've got your beautiful bag everything's presented really well the staff are being amazing and you walk out and you spent yourself you know two dollars on a, on a pod when you can spend three fifty four fifty on a, on a coffee so that's a whole experience that had to be had to get to a price point so it's the same as if you're going to go into you know um, into any any place of business where you've got a ch you've got a cheaper and you've got a premium. If you go to into a you know uh, you know a you know a fifty dollar uh, massage place for an hour versus a hundred and fifty dollar massage place for an hour, it's going to look different. Like that's the process. It's going to look different, right? So the look and the feel of your whole brand needs to change. That's definitely advice I'm going to give you on that, Daniel. But on top of that, then the sales process comes into it. So you know if you're coming along to sales mastery, um, you know I would definitely definitely recommend doing that because we cover in detail. In fact, I didn't build Sales Master to say, do you want to be the cheapest? You know, come and learn how to do it. You know, you want to be the cheapest? Ask them what their price point is and say, okay, I'll do it for that. If you want to be the premium, the first comes down to the brain that you have, then, and very importantly, is your sales process. Because you said to me, someone wants to get a bargain. Okay, well, when someone says, how much is it? What do you say? Do you use deflective questioning? Do you find ways to get avoid the price and focus on on you know the the, the ROI or the benefits that they're going to get or the um you know the 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 all of the outcomes they're going to get from, from from investing in your product or whatever your service may be. So what are you focusing on? And you need to go through that process. And importantly, if you've got a business, Daniel, your whole team needs to focus on this thing. You can't just say we're the cheapest. If someone calls up and says, well, how much is something? It's a common thing you're going to get. They've got to learn how to deal with those things. They've got to learn how to deflect and get focused focused on value and not focused on cost as well. So looking at your brand, 
looking at the experience and absolutely looking at your sales process. Let me tell you something, you go to a high end of anything, high end agent, real estate agent, uh, a high end car dealer, you go into a, a high end broker, you go into a high end tech store, you go, you're going to have the best salespeople that are there because there's a brand there and they understand they're gonna be paying a premium for what they do. That's what you need to come on, that's what you need to understand when you wanna be in a premium sort of a market as well. So I hope that helps in Aaron's advice. Yeah. Um, we got uh, one question. Well, we got some questions in um, Instagram. Just, oh, hey, Insta. Forget it. So from I'm gonna mess this up. Lita Cathcart. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that's how you say it. Uh, hashtag Garen's advice. Um, so this might have been related to a segment. How would you do this if you're ready? If, if you are in the idea, ready to launch? You probably talk about the numbers. Right, so you can do the burn rate, for sure. How much it's gonna cost you to run your business. You can do your revenue goal, for sure. What's your goal? You can do your profit goal, for sure. What's your goal? You can do your KPI, for sure. What's your goal? Um, you can do your sales campaigns, you can do your marketing campaigns. I'll put it to you this way. If you don't know because you've never launched your business before, then you need to guess what's going to be the revenue. Guess what your costs are going to be. Get some advice from others on what those costs might be and then add a buffer in. If you say, you know what, we need to make this amount of sales to be able to break even, then say, add 20% on just to be sure. If you say, you know what, it's gonna cost me X to run the business every month, add 20% on just to be sure. Get a couple of months in where you get to settle down and level up. Then you can say, okay, the last three months that we've done, here's what we've done and here's what we think the result's gonna be if we keep moving forward. Then you get to start to predict your success, right? If you look at every business, there is a pattern. And once you find that pattern, you can grow your business based on it as well. So if you are in a launch and idea stage, and it sounds to me like you've been to um, Empire Master when you're talking about those different stages, then um, you need to start having some guesstimations on what you think it might be. Costs, you've got to get as accurate as humanly possible. And then you just need to make sure that you're starting to build your sales. You know, If you're breaking even after 12 months, 18 months, that's most businesses should be really happy with that. So many businesses I meet, they say, Aaron, I've got to break even in three months. Well, do you? Because if you're trying to break even in three months, it's because you're putting all of your costs back into making your initial investment back. You start in a business, you need to go, well, here's $50,000. I don't need that back into a liquidity event, which means till the business is sold, somebody else is purchasing it, whatever. I don't need that back. I'm not looking for my initial investment back. Then let's build the business and what's my working capital. Then later on, when you sell shares in your business or when the business is in a great position of 50 grand is nothing, you can take your initial investment back. Too often we're trying to get paid our initial investment back as opposed to just getting the business launched and running. Make sense? Right. Thanks, Lisa, with the surname that my team can't Lisa, say. Lita. Yeah, so, well, that's what Aaron's name is. Let's go with that. Um, all right, I think we've got time for one more question. I'm gonna go to emails again. Aaron, uh, sorry, production, sorry, studio. Studio at, at aaronsansoni.com. Aaron uh, for questions and their like. Uh, from Anthony, we've got something a bit more, I guess, less business, business centric, but some people will probably benefit from it. Um, I have some close friends who I feel aren't good for my mindset. I feel deflated and unmotivated after being around them. They're not bad people, just unmotivated, but it's catching, any advice? Tell them to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> That's always an option. That, that, that's, that's Listen, he, here's how I look at it, right? Here's my, here's my thing, right? If they're literally a blood related to you, um, I'm not saying you, you know, you, look, listen, if they're complete assholes and they're doing something wrong, then you can tell them the fuck off. But listen, if they're just, you know, not nice people or they're just not encouraging or whatever, if they're blood related to you, you know, I've got people in my family that are like that. Let me tell you that much for free. I think everybody does. And those people that will judge you in a thousand ways for what you do, then if you can kind of see them at births, deaths and marriages, put them over in that box, um, if you can make a change and, and not have to be around them, you know, if they're a friend or an acquaintance, then you can say, I'm sorry, I'm out. Text them, I'm out, done, it's over, block number. I don't wanna be around you anymore. If people aren't encouraging, if they're not you know, value adding, if people are not um, inspirational, if people are not motivational, if people are not activational, if, if people don't positively push you and help you to go where you wanna go, then why be around them? Life's too short, this is not a dress rehearsal. Like this is, why are you mucking around with people that don't serve you? You need to make the tough decisions or you can stay in misery and you do become that some of the five people you hang around. That quote 
is relevant. I don't care how strong your mindset is. If you hang around with people that are uh, uh, lower than you in their mentality that maybe what they see of what they stand as if they want from the world, I'm not saying that they're lower than you in terms of who they are, they might just have a lower standard. Like let's say they respect themselves here, therefore they accept shit in their life. You say, you know what, my standards are here. I'm gonna have a friend around me, I'm gonna expect this from my friend. If I'm gonna have a staff member around me, I'm gonna expect this from that staff member. You gotta go out there and find your tribe of people that you wanna be around. And then after you do that, the only way you grow is by being around people that, that are on that next level than what you are. You know, having your mentors around you, having people that you can believe in and trust, having people that push you in all those different ways you wanna be pushed. The fact you're watching this live stream and you've mentioned that um, on email to us today means that you obviously wanna make a change. You're just looking for someone to give you permission and say, you know what, write list to the people that you need to write list to and say, I'm out, I'm done it's over and get around good people that you know that, that give a shit about you you know I mean, it's why i love going out there on the road and meeting amazing entrepreneurs like next week we're at our, our events in in melbourne in sydney in brisbane in perth at the entrepreneurs summit now i don't think there's any tickets left there might be maybe in one of the cities but if there is entrepreneursummit.com.au but why i love doing that is because you've got a massive room full of people that give a shit about themselves and they're trying to propel themselves forward and all the naysayers and there's a lot of naysayers in the world you know especially once you start promote yourself you start to promote your business business, then all the naysayers want to come out and hang out, they're fine. They're always going to be there. It's how you deal with haters, how you deal with negative people, and it's the decisions that you decide to make to move forward is what's going to determine the rest of your life. And either you can swim in that pond with those people, or you can get out and you can take your toys elsewhere and start playing a different game. Uh, and you just need the permission to do it. Here's your permission. Go do it. Great. Um, Daniel from before says, great, thank you, Aaron. Appreciate your advice. And yes, I follow what you're saying. I better get on it. Smiley face and a thumbs up. Love it. And uh, we've got a question from Adam. Do we have time for that? All right, one more. All right, one more. Uh, Adam, lucky, you got in. Uh, we are growing a business and I feel I'm losing control on how busy we are. Should I outsource our marketing or should we employ an admin, uh, sorry, should we employ an admin person to manage this? Okay, so first of all, reframe your languaging, okay? I feel I'm out of control with how busy we are. I'm grateful that our business is at a point now where it's super busy. How do you feel when you say that versus I just, there's so much happening right now. Now it might just be a change in mindset. It might just be what you've typed, but for me, you're at a point now where you should be grateful your business is growing. So you've got growing pains. Now in growing pains, here's how I look at it. Um, one of my first endeavors in a business is to hire um, if, if you're focused on selling and bringing the business in, you need a you need your PA, you need your admin assistant, you need your go-to person. That needs to be your next hire. You need to be having people that are gonna deliver on whatever your business word may be. So if you don't have that person in place right now, hire that admin person that's gonna run the ship, run the office, you know, they're gonna be your PA, depends on what sort of business that you're in, but they're gonna be someone's gonna take care of that admin for you. That definitely needs to be your next hire. If your sales are increasing, then the only way they're gonna keep increasing is by delivering. And the only way it can deliver is if you're focused on being able to go and deliver with other people and you've got somebody else taking care of, of all of the administrative side of things as well. First hire would be an admin. Second hire is if you, if this business for you is, is really centered on you, then you, and let's say once you make a sale, you have to go and deliver on whatever that sale is, then you need to hire some salespeople in because if you don't, then as soon as you're delivering, you're not able to sell. And when you're selling, you're not able to deliver. Whereas if you have a business that's a product and you're just a part of that and you've got a few people that work for you, then having the admin people come in while you're still going and doing the deals and kicking those down to people that are being able to deliver on that is fine. But you've got to balance both those acts. If you don't have a strong admin person in your business and you're going crazy busy at the moment, you've got to get someone that absolutely loves admin, loves customer service, loves delivering, and you know loves looking after and loving the customers that you have. Hope that helped. Cool, right. last question, excellent. Thank you for hanging out on Instagram, on Facebook, and all around the world for Aaron Live. Once a month we get to do this. Uh, we'd love your suggestions, studio at aaronsansoni.com. We've got some suggestions on any of the segments. If you see a, if you see a WTF, if you see a love it, you see something for the business news, a top 10, whatever it may be, we'd love to hear from you guys as well. Or a mental minute, you want me to share something you think is really appropriate for you, um, maybe we can look at doing that in one of our shows. Every month we get to get live. So I'm excited about hanging out with you live right across social right around the world i'm looking forward to meeting a bunch of you on tour next week 
for the Entrepreneurs Summit. And uh, some of you are gonna be hanging out with in the following month as well. So I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to joining you guys on tour or even at Sales Mastery at the end of September. You wanna learn more about where I'm gonna be? Head to aaronsansoni.com and there's all stuff about our tours and the things we're gonna be doing there as well. So thanks for hanging out. Remember, why do we get to do this? Because I wanna teach you one thing and one thing alone. Focus on this, living by design and not living by default. Till next time, this has been Aaron Live. Ciao for now. See you Facebook, see you Insta, hope you guys loved it, hope you had it.